All right, this is a run showing off the power of the new King Goob. Uh, in order to get King Goob, you have to combine the gem box and a royal crown in order to get like the big crown thing. And then you combine a Goobert with that. And it ends up being a effect of heal for 25. Um, and also, I think it spends six mana to become invincible or invertible for one second. And it can do that three times. Plus, it ends up having six different trigger activ uh, activations, so you can activate it much more quickly. And so I thought I would show this off by going for the Staff of Unhealing, which makes it so any healing that you do also can deal damage. Um, it costs a whole bunch of mana, and is a little bit difficult to actually set up. So I'm doing it in Unranked. I'm currently in like low mid diamond with pretty much everything except for Ranger, where I'm Master. Um, I was Master on Berserker and Pyro, but I have quickly fallen back down. I feel like since this new patch, it's been a little more difficult to actually climb because I'm not entirely sure what the meta is. Also, going back to the default one speed, I think it's much more dramatic because you can't really tell like uh, who's going to win. I get so impatient that I just leave it on three times speed sometimes, especially if I like get a little annoyed because I get a bad matchup and like lose 10 rating for no reason because of a bad start or something. I'm not sure if that's entirely my fault. Maybe... I am just bad at the game, but sometimes it does just feel like you get a bad start and it's really hard to recover, and then suddenly you just run into some really strong teams and there's just not that much you can do. But in unranked, that's much less of a problem. Um, you can fight so many weak teams and get away with so much more, which is why I'm buying a bunch of pigs. Get that extra gold. Now, pig isn't like super amazing because you only have five rolls, I think it's five, before the cost of rolling doubles to two, at which point I don't think it's worth it to ever roll, really, except for, like, the very last turn. So the pigs aren't insanely helpful, but they're still a little bit helpful. And they can also give a little bit of extra HP because of the start of battle activations. But in order to actually uh, win the start, going with the pan, which is, I think, the best start, it ends up being pretty good because it allows you to buy a bunch of food, which is good defense to survive get some healing or block from the garlic and then it also deals some decent damage <clears throat> plus you get the coffin effect for poison so that if you just last long enough you also win by poison at the start coffin just ends up being really good um so yeah and the game plan is pretty simple you just have to make sure you don't keep the pan too long i think you can go pandemonium which also is pretty good in like kind of the mid game to win some rounds um, this guy's got Molten Dagger, which is pretty insane. I feel like it's kind of OP, uh, since it's pretty easy to find a dagger, and you get a bunch of heat. It ends up being just so much DPS at the start. So, luckily, I do actually beat that team, since they didn't really have anything else. But if you're going against a good Biomancer team, they'll probably have, like, a Molten Dagger and maybe, like, a Torch or Burning Torch or whatever, and that's a pretty good way to start. I'm no expert at this game, like Diamond. I, when I watch a lot of people play this game, also, so the, buying a Mana Orb and a Staff at this point is way too late, I feel like, but I just, I was really forcing this one strat, and so I just had to buy it before the shop already made it so you don't really see any more Staffs in the future. And since it's unranked, once again, I can kind of get away with this, get away with so many things. I tried to do the strat when I was just in Diamond, and I could, like, kind of get there, but it ended up just not being good enough in survival to beat, like, any teams. And it was kind of disappointing, so um, it's pretty hard to set up. Because you need so much mana, since it costs, I think, 7 for the Staff of un uh, Healing to work. And it only lasts for 2 seconds, so you have to generate, like, 7 mana every 2 seconds. Plus, um, yeah, and then you just have to have so many activations for, like, the Goobert and try to get a bunch of healing on the board as well. So there's the Goobert. It's gotten nerfed many times. Goobert used to be like the super meta. Now it's not like super insanely good. It also, pretty awkward positioning here. I don't know why I have the pan as both the activators. I'm pretty sure I could get like the blueberry also to activate. So that's just my bad. Sometimes don't really notice things until after I watch it back. But um, yeah, so the magic staff, usually pretty solid. I feel like that can get a lot of wins. It's just hard to find some mana generation. Gotta rely on the shop RNG to find a mana orb or like a whole bunch of blueberries. Going against a cheese bird, but they don't have really a lot of activations right now. Or, I mean, they don't have the cheese bird yet, which is probably one of the worst goobs, unfortunately. Even though it seems like a lot of fun just to gain a bunch of random buffs. But if you want to use a strat that gains a bunch of random buffs, you gotta go for like the... 
um, the pan plus the stamina potion for Excalibur. It just activates so many of the foods once you get, uh, I think it's like 11 mana, activates all the foods around it. And so you can get like a whole bunch of cheese and then just start to get a ton of HP from that and a ton of buffs. Which is uh, probably one of the more like satisfying strats. So I'm cutting out a lot of the inventory rearranging because it turns out that's like a huge portion of the video. <laughs> I didn't realize how much time I actually spend just doing the inventory like rearranging. But it's, I mean, it's sometimes satisfying to get like everything perfectly, but I figured it'd be best to just kind of cut it out. And I've also found that perfect mana orb that's going to get quite a lot of triggers. And so now the magic staff is going to use its ability actually quite a lot. Although this team, surprisingly good, actually, I guess the, what is that? That's the, uh, the short bow plus the poison flask. I forget what the name of that thing is because you really don't see it too often, but I believe its ability is like 70% chance to inflict two poison or something and maybe a random debuff. So it turns out maybe that's okay in like the middle of the game, but you really don't see it any later because, I mean, potions, the poison flask is seven gold, quite expensive, even four on sale. And so you really don't want to spend that much gold just to get something like that, I think. And now, yeah, here we get the mana orb to combine with the... Um, uh, man, I'm forgetting a lot of the names of things, but creating the mana thirst, that's just on attack, you gain one mana, so that'll obviously work with the Magistaff for now, just to kind of win these rounds. Also, just good mana generation, I guess. I'm not sure if it's actually faster or slower than a mana orb. I really haven't, like, tested it out. I think I look at some of the stats later on here, and it ends up being, like, it's slightly better if you have enough... Uh, mana or fanny packs to get like a whole bunch of quick activations but it's probably around the same mana generation i don't know maybe it also just depends if you have a morb uh or mana orb that's actually in a like perfect spot it's just really annoying to position sometimes because i mean there's just so many things that require precise positioning with like the fanny pack the goobert the cauldron which requires a bunch of food around it to activate a whole bunch faster anyway the cauldron by the way i don't know if i should explain everything that everything does but it can give you five heat, it can give you, is it four mana? I forget the exact mana, or it can heal for like 15. So uh, there's the combined King Crown, that's what it's called. Um, unfortunately, it gets rid of the gem box, so I, sometimes like maybe you wanna wait a couple turns to combine be, so you can actually get the gems, because the gem effects are amplified by 50% on the King Crown, but I don't actually have enough gems to really like use that effect very well. I just have some of the random like chipped ones which is uh not great but i suppose unhealing and healing are the ones you're looking for which are the sapphire and the ruby i think are what they are so the purple and red ones um the red obviously amplifies your healing which is going to be really good and then the purple to uh, reduce their healing which is usually helpful like s most boards have some form of healing there's pineapples there's bananas and occasionally i'll go against a team like a um, what is it, the Chief Train or something like that? The Berserker class that heals a whole bunch uh, once they activate the Battle Rage, and that can be pretty good. Going against one of the new items here that gains a whole bunch of Empower, unfortunately not very good in most situations. Also, that is the class that they had, so yeah, that was pretty helpful. And then, oh, so the Cauldron also can uh, upgrade potions for free. So there's a Divine Potion, and it turns out the Strong Divine Potion is... I, I have no idea if it's actually good or not. This is one of those things where I'd have to defer to, like, one of the experts. I watch, like, Time for Miracle stream on Twitch, and uh, he's pretty good at this game. Or he's he knows what he's talking about, I think. Um, and I don't know if it's worth it to buy these on-sale potions just to upgrade them, but I can't resist. When I think see things on sale, I just end up trying to buy them, and hopefully it's good. But I believe the Strong Divine Potion, it cleanses 10 debu debuffs when you have at least 10 debu uh, debuffs, and then... The upgraded version also gives you like eight random buffs or something. So, I mean, it can't be that bad, right? Usually it can give you, I guess, like what would be best? Vampirism, probably. I don't know. I assume that counts as healing. Um, heat is usually pretty nice. I guess, um, like, can always take some empower for that extra damage. It's just sometimes, I guess, like, if it gives you mana when you already have plenty of mana, or maybe like regen at this point isn't super amazing. Um, but yeah, so there's the Staff of Unhealing, finally gonna get that, and I'm trying to buy just as many mana orbs as I see, really want to make sure I have enough generation. 
um, because, yeah, I need a lot, I guess. It's just for the Staff of Unhealing. I don't really need anything else. Maybe it's not that much, but I also, like, I kind of messed up. There's a lot of things I probably do wrong here. Like, this, I don't know what this positioning is. I have a Mana Orb in one of the Goob slots. That's probably not very good. It's just hard to really fit everything in. Perhaps I should just sell the pigs at this point. I don't really need the extra money, but... I don't know, I can't resist. And yeah, that mana orb, it's not a great spot, it only has one activation, but I think I have plenty of mana at this point. Um, although, oh wait, that's right, the King Goob is using six to become invincible, so that is kind of rough. I guess that's gonna cause some of the Magistaff things to not really work. Also, running out of stamina, I guess that could be an issue, but there we go, there's to survival. Um... Yeah, so I guess maybe the banana should be in a better spot, or I need another banana. There's another fanny pack. Um, looks like I'm using it on the banana, maybe just because of the stamina. I don't think I... Re I probably, like, the Staff of Unhealing, its cooldown at this point, is already faster than two seconds. So I guess it's going to have permanent uptime, assuming I have enough mana. So I guess you don't really need to go too much faster. Unless you want it for, like, the Goobrit activations, which I suppose is, like, a fair thing. But um, maybe I should fanny pack uh, just the, like, Mana Thirst. I'm not... It's tricky. Um, and now I need one more Goobrit activation. And that's not going to be a great one. That's just a one-time thing. Um, and then, yeah, I should probably try to get this banana on. Especially if they have any shields, it probably is really going to screw me over. Maybe I should just, like, put a pig in the... Yeah, I probably should just replace the mana orb, or the pig with the banana. Also, activate the mana orb is what I meant to say. Got a battle axe, which has been nerfed quite a bit, so it's no longer super good. But also just not exactly a strong team. And they have some random, like, vampire daggers. That's one way to spend all of your gold. Those are so expensive. It costs 13 gold. Even if you have, like, both things on sale, it's still probably not even going to be worth it unless if you actually have some synergies. Like, Hammer Dagger ends up being pretty good, I feel like, in Reaper. It's just really hard to set up because, I don't know, like, Hammer is pretty expensive early on and also just it loses a lot. There's also just a lot of RNG from it since it's only got, like, so much accuracy, which you can help it out by, like, playing cards or something, maybe getting, like, a flute, but... Um, yeah, the dagger, hammer dagger, I feel like is not great until you unlock the subclass where you get the cursed dagger and then you can like, it starts being actually good, but you kind of have to like set up for it beforehand, which can be kind of tricky. But once you actually get it going, man, is hammer dagger like super broken in the end game. You have to have a whole bunch of like stamina pots, a whole bunch of gloves and stuff like that. But once you actually get that going, it just, it deals such insane damage. I lost to some teams, some ranger teams, not even reaper teams, that are like hero sword plus hammer dagger, and they just kill you like instantly. It is so fast. It is kind of insane. Also, I think I messed up by, uh, yeah, I'm missing a mana orb trigger in the bottom left there. Uh, sometimes you just don't notice these things, but another mana orb. I'm not even sure if I need it at this point. I do have some pretty good mana generation. I think, like I said before, I don't actually need the gloves on the Staff of Unhealing. That was just like a slight mistake because its cooldown is already fast enough. And I guess, yeah, gloves actually for the banana. That seems like it'd be good. And then more anti-heal. That should be pretty good. I think it's probably best to put the healing. Yeah, there we go. Um, I'm not sure uh, how much percentage. Is it like 15 or 20 from that version? And then it's amplified by 50%. I guess, ideally, if you got a perfect one, I think it's like, is it 35% at perfect? Maybe 40%? Not entirely sure. Plus another 50%. That would be like 60% extra healing. I mean, 25 is already a pretty decent amount. And the Staff of Unhealing is it heals for like 18. I guess like loving it just for that extra heal is kind of worth it. And then you also got like the Cauldron. Dude, it's pretty insane how much healing this actually has. Um... Granted, some teams, like the Hammer Dagger, I didn't really run into any team that was, like, specifically insane to really test out how good this team is. Um, it would be kind of interesting to see. I wonder, like, what if there's, like, a sandbox mode? Or, like, a replay mode, like in SAP, in Super Auto Pets? You can, of course, go back and watch the replays of the fights now. And so that would be kind of interesting to see. Uh, although, I mean... 
you can already just look at the stats and everything. I guess it's not really super needed, but a sandbox mode also would be so complicated to set up. I don't think anyone would really want to spend that time. But some people, like, you can take this game very seriously with, like, how much in-depth you want to go to really, like, maximize everything, like, crown timing, like, how much mana you're getting, like, per second or whatever to really try to optimize, like, when your crown is going to go off. Um, like, I think it's cool to really try to optimize this game but i just i don't really have the patience for it i just kind of play this game it's fun i like this game a lot even if like i just end up gaining elo and then losing it all and really end up going nowhere i just like playing the game it's uh, it's pretty cool um perhaps this is the most fun is to just like find a bunch of meme builds to play and then just uh i don't know it's hard to make them work if you're really trying to gain elo but if you're not like worried about that which is probably the best way to go just for your sanity then you'll probably end up having some fun. And unfortunately, like, most of the new items in this game are not very good. They have the, like, I don't know what it is, the Magistaff plus the Poison, and then there's the Magistaff plus, like, the Berserker thing. There's the King Gooberts, and then there's, like, Thorn Blossom, which is the Thorn Whip plus the Stamina Potion, which pretty much just gives you, like, a little bit extra in power. Most of those don't seem to be very amazing, but... I mean, I'm sure there'll be a balance change in, like, at least, if not this week, maybe next week, and then we'll maybe see some changes. That's the nice thing, is having so many balance changes. It just it gives you incentive to, like, try out the new things, or at least not play the same thing every time. I remember back when Steel Gubert was, like, super insanely OP, and you, I got to Grand Mass through Steel Gubert, but I have not been able to replicate that. I haven't even gotten, like, mid-master. Like, I get stuck in low-master, it's just, it's really difficult when there's not, like, one crazy OP strat, which is probably good for balancing, but, um, also, is this person going for the similar thing? Staff of Unhealing plus a Goober plus a Crown? They don't have King Goober yet, and I feel like that's a huge difference. I mean, King Goober, obviously, uh, is, like, how much better? Like, 250% more healing, plus you get so uh 50% more triggers, so it just ends up being so much better for healing, and there we go. I think that round was on 0.5 speed. It looks like I have plenty of mana with uh, three mana orbs plus mana thirst. Flawed Sapphire. So if you put that on equipment, what was it like uh, for every five mana? Oh, yeah, plus the crown, sure. I guess if I have plenty of mana, I can get some more invincibility. It gives three block, I think. So since I have a ton of mana generation, probably worth it. I remember, I, like, it's always nice to get, like, on sale things, but I got, like, a perfect like sapphire one of these games not this one specifically but one game where i just had like a crowd ton of mana orbs and just had like a perfect sapphire and it ended up generating i don't know like 80 block or something like that i forget the exact amounts but it's like that's more than like a stone armor or something or no wait stone armor might be 90 i'm not sure but it ended up being like so much block and then a perfect emerald. This is what? There's two more rounds. So yeah, okay. I can finally start to get rid of these pigs. And sure, the there's no gem slot on the Staff of Unhealing, unfortunately. But why not get even more mana and more triggers for Gooberts? It'd be interesting. How many times does Goobert actually activate? I could probably look at that. One, two. Is that three, four, five, six? seven so much invincibility eight nine is that nine activations something like that's pretty cool and this is the final round so i can go ahead and sell the gems i guess i just buy a heart because i'm not really sure what i was looking for i just want something to kind of activate the goobert as quick as possible and i guess heart has like a three second cooldown which is somewhat fast uh the fastest is usually lamp I guess the very fastest is actually Villain Sword, which I saw one and did not take. It would have been interesting to try to. It just would have run out of stamina, but that has like, is it a 1.2 second cooldown? So I think that's the fastest in the game. And sure, just take another Divine Potion. I'm not sure like what percentage of teams really inflict 10 debuffs, but it seems like the majority of times some team has like some debuff infliction. And another Mana Orb, sure. Kind of hard to find a spot for it. Um... I think uh, in that fanny pack spot would have been good with the crown and the banana and the garlic and the goobert, but I didn't actually see that, so I guess that is unfortunate. 
Um, didn't don't have like the absolute best gems. I maybe could have gotten something slightly better. And also, this team unfortunately has a ton of unhealing, so that's gonna really screw me over. That's what this team definitely loses to. It's just a perfect like uh, anti heal stuff. Got caps and the corrupted heart. They don't even have that many gems or anything to really decrease it. But you could get absolutely screwed. Imagine, like, you just run into a team with 100% anti-heal. You just pretty much are completely dead. So taking a look at some of the stats here. Um, this is not exactly the best round since they have so much anti-heal. So I feel like I should have done this on the previous round. But as you can see, because of all their anti-heal, Mana Thirst was actually number one in damage. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure it would have been, like, Goobert and stuff of unhealing. Because I believe Cap is 30% and Corrupted Heart is 40%. Which means they had 70% of anti-heal. So just imagine these numbers much, much higher. They would definitely be the majority of the damage. But I guess that shows even against this team, which, to be fair, maybe not the strongest team again. Like, their main damage was Phoenix and Burning Torch. You definitely don't want a Burning Torch at this point. Um, so yeah, their team was not very strong. But I guess it's interesting. Yeah, so that 75 block from a flawed sapphire. Dude, holy crap. Imagine oh, you could put it on the crown as well. If I got a perfect one, that could have been like 200 block or something. That would have been crazy. And then looking at, yeah, so Staff of Unhealing used like 74% of the mana. But um, I guess this is a good way to farm the records as well as playing unranked. But it's pretty interesting. And a lot of fun to try out these new builds and unranked and just absolutely decimate teams. But thanks for watching. See ya.